Good evening. Welcome to 1010 Prayer Online. Today, I'm going to share something uh, that sometimes we find it hard to accept. But do you remember that in the Lord's Prayer, it goes, the Lord's Prayer goes like that, right? Why don't you just repeat it with me? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins, even as we forgive the sins of those who sin against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So there's this part. Our Father in heaven, forgive us our sins. So I thought that we would dwell on this a little bit, even as now we have enjoyed the presence of God, we have begun to really understand what it means to honour Him and to really know that He's worthy of our time and worthy of our communion with Him. And I'm sure some of you have received downloads from the Lord. The Lord has spoken to you, has strengthened your heart as He did mine. So I want to ask myself, what can be some of the factors that would hinder that communion? So turn with me now to Psalm 66 and we're going to read just from verse 16, all right? So Psalm 66, verse 16 to verse 20. So here's the Psalm. It says, Come and listen, all you who fear God. Let me tell you what He has done for me. I cried out to Him with my mouth. His praise was on my tongue. If I had cherished sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. But God had surely listened and heard my voice in prayer. Praise be to God who has not rejected my prayer or withheld His love from me. As we mentioned just now, one of our major uh, joys of our heart when we come before God, when we build this prayer altar, is that God would not reject our prayers. In fact, He would hear our cry and He would answer us from heaven and deliver us from all our problems and He would not withhold His love from us. In other words, when God withholds His love from us, it's as if something has come in between that relationship, something that hinders that relationship. So the psalmist is telling us what can hinder that relationship. And he says this, I like the way he started. He started by saying, come, I'm going to tell you an experience I went through. Let me tell you what he has done for me. So he says in verse 17, I prayed to him, I cried out to him, I sang praises to him. But, verse 18, if I had cherished sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. If I cherished sin, means if I love sin and I cherish it, and I, I, I believe that, that the, the way that I walk is right, God would not have listened to him. But praise God, he did not cherish sin and God has surely listened to his prayers and heard his voice and has not rejected his prayers and not withheld that communion in love with him. You know, when we, why, why, why is sin so important to God? Why does Jesus say, even as you pray, Father, forgive me my sins? Why does he say that? Sin is actually what separates us from God. It is what creates an offence or a barrier between us and God. Because think about this, two people being great friends, can two walk together unless they be agreed? They can't. So in the same way, if you have a very, very good friend, but you did something that offended that friend, actually, no matter how hard you try, there's a barrier in communication. There's a barrier that prevents you from building back a communion or relationship with that friend. In the same way, sin separates us from communion with God. And that is why repentance is a big part of building a prayer altar. Now, I want us to understand it's not just, uh, when we say sin, it's not just a blanket sin. That means, oh yeah, I didn't sin, I didn't kill someone, I didn't... Um, I didn't commit adultery, I didn't do whatever that is considered uh, obnoxious. Sometimes some things we think as obnoxious are crimes, they're not even sins. Yeah, but, but sin is really what separates us from God. 
So in order to know what sin separates us from God, it's actually God Himself or the Holy Spirit that gives us the grace even to know what are some of the things that may have caused this separation. And so I thought it's really good to think about that because if we feel suddenly there's no communication between God and us, we may want to stop down and say, Lord, what have I done that has offended this relationship? Now turn with me to 1 John chapter 1. And this is how we can look at sin and how we can learn to repent. 1 John chapter 1, and I'm going to read from verse 8. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. So the first way we can look at sin is this. We claim we are without sin. In other words, we are, this is not a sin. This is not a sin. Whatever God may call sin, and we say to ourselves, this is not a sin, then the truth of God is not in us. And if the truth of God is not in us, it is difficult for us, for God, to fellowship with us because God is truth. Amen? Let's look at another part and another way we could look at sin. Verse 10, if we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar and his word has no place in our lives. So there are two ways we can look at sin. We claim this is not a sin. Then God's truth has no value in our lives. Or we can say, no, I haven't sinned. Yes, I agree this is a sin. Uh, I'm not, I haven't sinned. Yes, that person has done that, but not me. Then we make God out to be a liar and the word has no place in our lives. Actually, once we say we, that is not, I haven't sinned, then our relationship with God is jeopardized. But then 1 John 1 verse 9 says, if we confess our sins, we, He is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us, cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So what does God do? The Holy Spirit's job is to convict us of sin, not to condemn us about sin. What's the difference? Condemnation puts us into guilt. Condemnation imprisons us. Even if we don't want to admit it, there's still a guilt feeling or a guilt thought. And that can get worse. Do you know, when guilt comes in, you know, the Lord's prayer says, uh, forgive us of sins and lead me not into temptation and deliver me from the evil one. God cannot now lead us away from temptation and also prevent the evil one from having a foothold in our lives. That is why it is important to let the Holy Spirit convict us of sin. It's when the Holy Spirit convicts us of sin, we are not guilty or condemned in sin. But the good news is that if we agree, the word confess is just, do you agree with what the Holy Spirit says is called sin? Now, I may not call it sin, you may not call it sin, but the Holy Spirit calls it a sin. And once he calls it, wow, I have to agree with him. And when I agree with him, with the word that he uses, with the diagnosis that he uses, immediately there's a relief because the blood of Jesus Christ is now activated. It gives God or the blood of Jesus legal ground now to take place, to release us from the accusation, to forgive us, to cleanse us even, and there's no more burden left. No more burden left. No more burden left. You know, for instance, if God were to convict me, and, and God has done it, uh, yeah, that actually you, you like the praises of men. But if I, I say, no, I don't like the praises of men. But then the Lord shows me, you do. Because when people don't praise you, you may be upset. Now, when God says that, and when I agree, the prison of being prisoned down by the praises of men. I'm a new person and neither can the devil have a foothold in my life. And the good news is the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses me. I may feel, oh Lord God, I'm so rotten. Why did I want these praises of men? But actually, I don't feel it anymore because God has cleansed me from that sin and from the guilt of sin. Now, I know it is a little bit much to consume, but just spend some time. Go back to Psalm 66 and ask yourself, 
I, do I want God to always hear my prayers? Do I want to be like the psalmist and not reject and not cause God to reject my prayers or even to withhold His love from me? No, I want His love. I want that communion. And I want to be not condemned. I don't want to have the devil to have a foothold in my life. I want the Lord's prayer to continue. Lord, you will not lead me in the way of temptation and you deliver me from the evil one. Yes, Lord. That is what God longs to do. Amen. So just spend some time thinking about this. But right now, we're going to pray together. Shall we? Let's pray together. Almighty God, our Saviour, our Master, our Redeemer, and indeed our Heavenly Father, who has chosen to forgive all our sins because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Because of the blood of Jesus Christ, the curse of sin is removed. Now, even as you teach us, Lord, to allow the Holy Spirit to convict us of areas in our life that are an offense to you, Father, we recognize it's only because our relationship, our communion with you can never be hindered by these offenses. Lord, we long, we long for you never to withhold your love from us. We long for you, O Lord God, indeed, O Lord, to be able to deliver us from the evil one. We long for you to listen to our prayers, to hear our prayers. We long for you, O Lord God, that the blood of Jesus Christ has legal ground to cleanse me and forgive us, Lord, from all our sins. And then we will no longer be imprisoned by thoughts of guilt, by even the evil one condemning us. Thank you so much, Lord. Thank you so much. Holy Spirit, we give you permission to convict us of sin so that the evil one cannot condemn us and accuse us before God our Father. What a wonderful thing Jesus has done. He has made it possible for our sins to be forgiven. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And Father, we also want to forgive the sins of those who sin against us for that is what you would require as well. If you have forgiven all our sins, we definitely can forgive other people's sins against us. Thank you, Lord. Minister to us tonight, O Lord God, Holy Spirit. Minister away the guilt and the condemnation. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Spend some time reading 1 John chapter 1. I think it's from verse verse 8 to verse 10 and then also Psalm 66 uh, those verses that I gave you and just praise the Lord that Jesus came that our sins may be forgiven God bless you have a good night rest and prayer Thank you.